you help me on that. Okay, good. So, uh, well, uh, I will introduce very briefly myself. First, I'm Antonella Cardone and I am the director at uh, ECPZ. Uh, ECPZ is the European Cancer Patient Coalition. Uh, I'm not sure how many people we have here, but I don't think we can get a quick uh, round of introduction. So I will just uh, get uh, into, the, into my presentation. And then uh, maybe when uh, you, you can ask a question, so then you can introduce uh, very briefly yourselves. So who we are, so the European Cancer Patient Coalition is the largest cancer patient umbrella organization in Europe. And we were established in 2003 and today we can count on 450 member organizations from 47 countries. So we cover the whole of Europe plus at least one member per each continent. Uh, and uh, our uh, main focus uh, is on uh, uh, advocating for patients uh, to be acknowledged uh, as equal partners and co-creator of their own health. Uh, by that, uh, we mean uh, that uh, we are a part of, uh, la of the largest uh, uh, research projects in uh, Europe, and uh, we also uh, um, uh, try to uh, uh, bring uh, the patient uh, voice uh, and the patient uh, preference uh, uh, into uh, the development, uh, into the life cycle of any um, uh, treatment or, uh, or drug development. Uh, and uh, in Europe, I mean, Europe is a big uh, continent with uh, huge disparities uh, across uh, countries, uh, but also within countries. And so we focus, uh, uh, we prioritize on uh, equalities. And uh, we, um, uh, as we believe uh, that uh, each uh, cancer patient uh, should have uh, timely and affordable uh, access uh, to the best Best treatment and care available throughout their lives. Uh, since uh, June to 2019, we have uh, a new board, and uh, with uh, a new board, uh, we have uh, uh, developed a new strategy. And our strategy focuses on uh, four pillars policy, research, education and uh, capacity building, communication and governance. On the policy side, uh, we work uh, a lot uh, with uh, the main European institutions, uh, including the European Parliament uh, and the European Commission. And uh, to that extent, uh, uh, um, uh, since uh, uh, the beginning of uh, 2020, we are also managing the secretariat uh, of uh, the, the first parliamentary intergroup on cancer, which is called the Challenger Cancer. And on the policy side, we also support our members uh, so that uh, they can uh, uh, relate uh, on, uh, with, uh, their, with the national MPs. On research, we are involved on several uh, projects. On uh, education and capacity building, uh, we work uh, to empower our members so that uh, they can advocate for themselves. On communication, uh, we develop uh, several uh, um, uh, social media campaigns. And on the governance, uh, we try to make sure that uh, all our members have a voice uh, in uh, our uh, uh, in our uh, governance and community so that uh, we build on a, a democratic organization. Uh, on uh, the research project, uh, we are involved uh, on uh, um, uh, a number of uh, EU projects. I mean, those names, uh, those titles uh, may not uh, uh, say much to uh, several of you if uh, you are not based in Europe, but uh, to the uh, to people working on uh, uh, cancer topics in Europe, uh, um, I'm sure that uh, those uh, titles of projects uh, resonate a lot. Those are the biggest uh, projects on, uh, on cancer that uh, we are uh, uh, working on in Europe, and we are part of them, bringing the uh, patient's voice. <coughs> Sorry. On uh, the personalized, personalized medicine side, uh, we um, uh, have uh, uh, started working since uh, 2018 and uh, we have uh, created uh, several materials. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> and I don't have water here. <coughs> uh, 
so we have, I'm, I'm sorry, I cannot uh, speak now. So maybe I can present this slide uh, after the other presenter. <coughs> sorry. Would you like me to share my screen and, and go ahead? I'm so sorry, and Antonella. And I will get a glass of water in the meantime, sorry. <laughs> okay, okay, I can go ahead and present, if that's okay. I'll try to share my screen here. Um, it says, this will stop the others, so yes, we'll do that. And um, my name is Gina Hollenbeck. Um, I am the president of ALK Positive. In 2015, I was diagnosed with stage four lung cancer that had metastasized to my brain. Um, doctors in major medical um, institutes told me that um, I had about 10 months to live back in 2015. And um, so I went to the library of that major medical hospital and I started researching. Uh, my background is I'm a nurse. I had two young sons and you may hear them in the back because they're doing school, virtual school here. So sometimes they get a little bit loud. So I apologize if you hear them in the background. Um, but um, I have two sons and I was a nurse and um, I just did all the research that I could at that major medical hospital. We had to travel eight hours away from my sons when I first got diagnosed. I had absolutely no risk factors for lung cancer. And so um, I wanted to figure out as much as I possibly could. And so the doctor um, told me that we were waiting for biomarker testing. I, I think he actually called it genomic sequencing back then, which I had no idea what that meant even as a nurse. I was kind of like, are you looking at my genes or what are you, what are you looking at? So I had to educate myself in the library to figure out what biomarker testing was, that they were actually gonna look at the DNA of my cancer and try to figure out if there were any targets. Um, so anyway, I um, started looking for groups and I became a member of um, a Facebook group that was for out positive patients. It was started by another nurse. Her name was Marita Carroll, and sadly, we lost her in April of 2018. But our group had about 200 members, and it was growing and growing and growing. About eight of us decided that we wanted to make sure that we could find some type of research. Um, for our disease and that we were kind of tired of waiting for pharmaceutical companies to come up with something new for us. That we had some pretty amazing targeted therapies that worked really well, but the problem with the targeted therapies is eventually you create uh, drug resistance and they quit working, usually in about 12 months. So at, that, at the time that I was diagnosed, there were two drugs, so that gave me about two years is kind of what the doctor told me in the major medical um, teaching hospital. Luckily, I had another community doctor right here in Memphis, where, uh, Tennessee, where I live, who, who kept saying, oh no, we're gonna try to cure this. We're gonna do everything we can to try to cure this. So we're not gonna tell you that you have two years. Your story is your own, Gina. Those statistics are statistics, but your story is yours. And that's one of the things that I loved about him is that he was always trying to help me advocate for myself. So when I found the Facebook group, it was amazing. It was from uh, people from all over the world who had ALK, the ALK Fusion, so it's a lot like Intrek, but they had the ALK Fusion. Predominantly, the people in the group had lung cancer, um, but we also had people who had breast cancer that was driven uh, by ALK, sarcomas, um, we have some skin cancers, melanomas, and we had a few children who had brain cancers that were driven by ALK. So um, it was really interesting. We allowed anybody, they didn't have to just have lung cancer. So we let anybody who had the ALK fusion into the group because they still took the same targeted therapies and we wanted to make sure that we understood um, from them and, and that we were you know, ba basically just information sharing. I would definitely say that the group has saved my life on several occasions. We also saw a lot of disparities in the group. Our group is, um, we, when you join the group, you put your little uh, mark on the map, and this was kind of one of the ways that we could tell where people were in our group. And so you can see that predominantly we're in the United States and Europe. Um, but it was really amazing because these members were sharing information from, um, you know, from within the group, and it just made us so much stronger because we were such an educated group. We also had some healthcare providers, some re researchers who um, also were ALK positive, and they were providing the information 
information to the group in layman's terms. We were also making sure that patients had the same type of care. So we noticed over and over again, a lot of patients would get diagnosed with this oncogene-driven cancer, yet they weren't getting the targeted therapy. They were still being put on chemotherapy and radiation, which just didn't work for this lung cancer. So we started growing and we started learning a little bit more. Um, but um, we started some programs, but one of the most important things is when our group actually started coming together. And in 2017, we had our first ALK Summit, which was in Kentucky, and members of our group um, flew from all over, and we had probably at the first summit about 100 um, patients there. So it was really exciting just to actually teach and um, learn about the disease and then meet other patients. It was really ex um, an exciting opportunity. The next ALK Summit was even bigger. We had about 200 patients at the next ALK Summit, and that was in 2009. 19. We had it in Atlanta. It was right across the street from the American Cancer Society. So we took the largest group of stage four lung cancer survivors to the American Cancer Society. And it was so amazing to be able to do something together and to bond together. But we got really tired of waiting for the research to come. So the first year in 2017, we raised $600,000 and we funded three um, research grants for out positive um, lung cancer. <clears throat> In 2019, we raised $500,000 um, to look at how combination therapies could help out positive um, cancers. And then um, in, in 2020, we just raised uh, $1.3 million, and we funded two clinical trials for ALK um, positive cancer and, um, and then another uh, research project. And so that was one of the things that was really exciting to me, that working together as a group, these patients having lemonade stands and uh, you know, karaoke night and having parties, they, they raised together you know, $1.3 million to fund a clinical trial for our disease. And, and the thing is, we were seeing members of, of our group, and this is the hard part about us all coming together, is we would make these friendships and we would sometimes see the members of our group um, die. And a lot of times we would see that they wouldn't get the same care. So that third little box over there is the second opinion program. And in the second opinion program, um, what, what um, we were noticing is that throughout the world and throughout the country, not everybody had access to people who understood ALK positive lung cancer or ALK positive cancer in general. And so the Second Opinion Program was funded by a very generous donor who um, funds a, second, a remote Second Opinion. So we've been doing this since these uh, remote and telemedicine since 2017. And we would hook them up with, um, out, we just call them ALK gurus. And so they're uh, people who really understand the disease, who have researched it, and who understand um, you know, what type of medica medications what type of sequencing and things like that that out positive um, cancer patients need. Oh, and that, oh, that might be the end. Oh, I think I have one more slide. Let's see if I can go over here. There it is, my um, people. There we go. Um, but this is just kind of my words of inspiration that together we are better and together we can make change. And I'm going to tell you that in my group, um, a lot of times I, I was a little bit different some, from some of the groups that had been formed before our out positive group. And we got kind of a little bit of flack for focusing only on out positive lung cancer instead of all lung cancer. But what the way that I look at it is that we're all this big team. We all have cancer and we're this big team and we all have our different roles to play in this cancer game. And it's okay to focus on your disease. I know for sure that the reason that our fundraising was so successful is because the people who were fundraising and doing lemonade stands knew that it was going to affect them. They knew that the money was going to go to research that would help them. And so that's um, one of the reasons that I think things were so um, you know, successful. So I just think we're one of the team players on the on the entire team when it comes 
to cancer. Um, and, and like I said, you know, we have people who have breast cancer and melanomas and other cancers uh, driven by ALK, but all together, when we're all focusing on, on the specific instance of, of the disease, I really think that we can uh, make change. And alone, we're very fragile. So that was kind of my little snowflake analogy that a snowflake is one of nature's most fragile creations. But when we all come together, we can create an avalanche and we can make some big change. So that's why I'm so excited about the Trekkers. I'm so excited about the group and I am just looking forward to seeing what you guys can do because I know it's going to be uh, you guys are going to make some really really big change and help a lot of people. Thank you.